ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونتوب اليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اعلم عباد الله ان احسن الكلام كلام الله تبارك وتعالى وخير الهدي وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار ثم اما بعد عباد الله ما دي brothers and sisters الحجاج الحمد لله رب العالمين they were they done with their righteous deeds of the hajj season this year and i'm sure as we speak now on this number some of them already went back home and many more are waiting on standby to arrive soon inshallah ta'ala and soon enough we shall see some of them coming back to our masjid and return back again among their community we're still living the spirit of hajj the memories of hajj and the lessons that we can really learn from this beautiful season this beautiful experience in a previous khutbah i discussed with you father ibrahim alayhi salam and i said it and i mean it that wallahi it takes a man like ibrahim alayhi salam to be a father however what else can we learn from the story of ibrahim alayhi salam and hajj can we learn motherhood from that story the answer indeed is yes it's not fair just to talk about fatherhood from the stories of ibrahim and the story of hajj without even talking about the counterpart of this experience motherhood but how can we do that just like we said about ibrahim that wallahi it takes a man like ibrahim to be a father i would proudly say it takes a woman like hajar to be a mother hajar the mother of ismail alayhi salam who went through a lot of sacrifices for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for fulfilling a mission of her husband who was the great messenger of allah azza wa jalla she went through a lot of trials she went through a lot of experiences and all of this when she was patient and obedient to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first and foremost obedient to her husband alayhi salatu wassalam ibrahim and being that beautiful mother to her child ismail alayhi salam fa radiyallahu ta'ala anha wa alayha salam it takes a woman like hajar to be a mother now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala obviously in the Quran spoke highly of motherhoods and mothers. Do you know that your mother, she deserves all the respect. She deserves all the khair. She deserves everything that you can really give her with good heart, the fruit of your own earnings. She deserves that by the virtue of giving birth to you. She doesn't have to prove it to you. She has already done many, many years back. when you were nothing yet and she had to carry you for many months in her belly as allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describing that says wa wassayna al-insana bi walidayhi hamalatu ummuhu wahnan ala wahn wa wassayna al-insana bi walidayhi and we have been joined on man to be good to his parents in travail upon travail did his mother bear him he didn't say anything about his father he didn't say that. Because his father, when he did what he did, was out of pleasure. But when she did that, when she carried him, as Allah described, wahnan ala wahn, travail, means painful, painful work. The pain in the carrying of the child, the pain when she was delivering the child, was all pain in pain. Not just painful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, wahnan ala wahn. And in the Arabic language, the word wahn comes from weakness. that young energetic woman suddenly the moment she discovers that she's pregnant she becomes very weak 
so fragile. She can't even stand the smell that she used to enjoy before. She could not even eat and enjoy the food that she wants, she desired. She could not do anything, she could not carry things that she normally would carry. She becomes weak. And now, as the child develops, that's you, in the bed of your own mother, slowly and gradually, she gets weaker and weaker every single day and every single night. Have you seen a pregnant woman in the last few weeks of her pregnancy? That's the time when she starts feeling that just let's get over with it. She no longer can carry that load anymore. It's too much for her, subhanAllah. And she thinks, poor lady, she thinks by delivering that child, all that pain and all that load will be gone. Not knowing that another episode of that weakness of a weakness will continue. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَفِصَالُهُ فِي عَامَيْنِ وَفِصَالُهُ فِي عَامَيْنِ That means, the weight that is weaning will live by the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala within a period of two years. She shall be responsible for you, and she was responsible for you, for the first two fragile and, 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 and weak years of your life. The first two years. You were that baby running around, crawling before that, and she was taking care of you. That is your mother. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Anishkur li wali walidayk. And I'm reminding you, Allah is saying, reminding you with that, so that you be grateful to me and be grateful and thankful to your parents. Allahu Akbar. This great association of gratitude, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not do it anywhere else except between Him and your parents. To be grateful in such an amazing way, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning that, that you might become grateful to me and to your parents. So by virtue of giving birth to you, they already deserve it. Don't try to, to ask them to prove it to you. They've already done. Hajar was a mother. And she was a great example of Allah to show that, that she indeed deserved. Deserved to be praised because we're going to see inshallah ta'ala how she was preserved. Her memory was preserved. Her legacy continued until our time. Bi'idhnillahi azza wa jal. Ibadallah. Your mother, when she gave birth to she didn't let you go. She held you for two years, at least, trying her best to nurse you and nurture you. Now the role of mothers is irreplaceable. Regardless how, how much people they try to convince others, specifically young girls of our time who grew up in the culture of the power girls. Now we see that motherhood is no longer as it used to be. It's not that it's really appreciated as it used to be. We consider this a burden instead of consider this an honor to be, a, to be a great mother for your children and mother in this society and in this culture. SubhanAllah, to show you how mothers, they are willing to sacrifice everything, even sacrifice you for your own safety. SubhanAllah. In one of these stories of Bukhari and Muslim, Rasulullah sallallahu says that two women from Bani Israel at the time of Dawood alayhi salam and, the, and Suleiman, his son. Two women, they went out to the pasture. They took their baby children with them. The wolf came and prayed one of these kids, killed one of these kids, and took it away. Now those two ladies, they're fighting right now for their very child. Each one of them claiming that child to be hers. So they went to Dawood, alayhi salam. He said it's for the elder one, for the older one. He told her, this is yours. On the way out, they met Sulaiman. So the younger one, she said to him, she asked him to at least intervene and see if he could, if he could do reverse that judgment. So Sulaiman alayhi salam, he told them with his hikmah, his wisdom, he said, okay, that's fine, I can, I can solve the problem for you. Give me a knife, I'll split the child between you, inshallah ta'ala. So the younger one, immediately she said, qala la la, huwa la Allah. You know, that's hers. Allah bless you. Fine, keep it with her. So he gave it to the younger one. Why is that? Because in you, when she showed that kind of passion and compassion to the child, and the older one, she remained quiet, means she didn't, the remarriage is going to be killed. She wants the other one to suffer what she suffered. So he said, no, it's yours. <coughs> Mothers are willing even to keep your safety, even if, to lose you. They're willing to lose you to keep your safety and to keep you safe. 
What kind of feelings are these, subhanAllah? Amazing feelings. No one can really con conceive the power of motherhood except for the one who created them, subhanahu wa ta'ala, these mothers. Ibad Allah, when it comes to Hajar, Umm Ismail indeed, it takes a woman like Hajar to be a mother. This woman, first and foremost, was given to Ibrahim السلام, and she moved from her land, from Egypt, and she went with this man, Ibrahim السلام, to a strange land, in a sham. A very strange land to her, strange people, strange culture, but she went with him, and she remained obedient to him. She gave birth to his first child, Ismail السلام. And then what? Suddenly, when the child is still in infancy, He's still suckling milk, according to Ibn Abbas, which means he's less than two years old. Very young. That's when the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came to Ibrahim السلام, that you take your wife Hajar and her son Ismail and you send them down south in the middle of the desert. In an area that we know it today as Mecca. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described that in the dua of Ibrahim himself. Biwadin ghayri rizar. My Lord, I have placed my children, my offspring, my wife and my offspring in a barren valley. Uncultivated valley, nothing was there. Ya Rab, for you so that they might become grateful and they worship you and perform a salah. Ya Rabbi. So this woman, she goes with her husband. She did not complain. She didn't whine about it. She didn't try to run away. Obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, putting her trust in Allah azza wa jalla, and then with this man, who is a great messenger of Allah, and she traveled with him. With that baby with her coming in the deserts of Arabia, ya akhwa, if you just remember the past and how journeys you took place in the desert, it was so scary, it was so dangerous. But still, she carried that baby and that child with her. Then, when she arrived there, Ibrahim alayhi salam, he looked around, there was nothing, literally nothing, except for a pile of dirt that was covering the foundation of a Kaaba. That was it. And according to Ibn Abbas, as was mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, في قصص الأنبياء, he said that Ibrahim alayhi salam, he had one bag of fresh dates and one skin bag of water. So he just put them next to them. And then he just left. Didn't say a word. I'm sure it was very stressing moment for both of them. This man, after he a longing for a child, he was given the command to leave his son in the desert, leaving him with his wife, that young lady who couldn't do anything in the middle of the desert. But they both put their trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as he departed, not looking back so he doesn't feel the pain, he doesn't see her face and the face of the child as the child was crying. So as he was departing and leaving, his wife starts calling him, Ya Ibrahim, O oh Ibrahim, O oh Ibrahim. He didn't stop. He didn't say a word. Then she said, let me ask you this question. She said, where are you leaving us? He didn't say a word. Then she said, did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala command you to do that? Is this is the will of Allah azza wa jal? He said, yes, naam, absolutely. He said, one word. So Naam, without even looking behind his back. So he said, Naam, this is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That believing woman, to show her trust in Allah azza wa jalla, she said to him, okay then go ahead, to sleep. فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُضَيَّعْنَا أَبَدًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shall not neglect us. Allah will not neglect us. If this is the word of Allah, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what is best for us. Ibrahim alayhi salam kept going until he arrived at a distance where they couldn't see him, turned around towards the Kaaba direction and he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rabbana, inni askantu min durriyati biwadin ghayri dizawin inda baytika al-muharram, Rabbana, liyuqimu salat. Oh Allah, I put some of my offspring in that uncultivated valley, Ya Rabb, so that they worship you and they establish salat. Rabbana, faj'al afkilatan min al-nasi tahwi ilayhim. Let some people of good hearts incline towards them. And indeed it happens not too long after that. But in between these two incidents, something else happened. This lady, now the mother of this young baby, she's alone. She needs to protect her child. But there's nowhere to go. There's no place to hide. So she was just taking care of the child until now there's no more milk. 
And there is no water even. It's the middle of the desert. So what is she going to do? To leave the child there or to carry him with her, it's a decision that mothers know what it means. Subhanallah, wallahi ya ikhwah. When I was reading about the story and how the mother of, of, of Ismail, Hajar, she was now holding her baby in the middle of the desert, dry desert. And now she encountered this decision. It could be a fatal decision. Should I leave the child here and go and look for water? Or should I take the baby with me? When she's already weak, she cannot even hold herself, she cannot even walk. She was put in that position, that situation. That reminds me with the story of the women from Somalia these days. The very famous story, perhaps you read about it on the internet. A woman with many children she had. She had to flee her village to go to the refugee camps. With her children, there perhaps were about eight kids. And on the way from that village to that village, to that camp, that refugee camp, about 100 miles journey, walking in the middle of dry desert, she was losing them one at a time, one after the other. She was walking with these children, subhanAllah, and she didn't have any Safa and Marwa Tiram in between. She didn't have Zamzam to go to quench her thirst and the thirst of her children. And here is this mother, Hajar, alayhi salam. She had that opportunity. She was spent looking for water, so she went to the closest mountain. And from one mountain, she looked around, there was nothing. Going to the next closest mountain, Al Marwa. And she kept going seven times back and forth, hoping that she might find some water. And Ya Ikhwa, look how anxious this mother was. You're talking about the same two mountains. If she's already had seen, if she already looked around on the top of the first hill, why would she need even to go back again to look one more time? She already done it. Nothing's gonna change. But she kept going back and forth, back and forth, anxiously, and that is the nature of mothers. They were willing to sacrifice their time and their life even for you as a man. You might look at it and say, that doesn't make any sense. Stay with your child. But that's a mother. And her instinct is different from a man. She thinks differently. She needs to protect her son. She's going to sacrifice her own life in order to save her child. Even if she's done it already, she's going to do it again and again and again seven times from one mountain to the other mountain just to see there might be another chance this time. It could be this time when I see someone or might find the water that I missed from the first look, second look, or even fourth look. Subhanallah how mothers look and how mothers think. This is amazing. And that's why children of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put the custody of children in the hand of their mothers not their fathers. Because they will take good care of their children. Um Ismail Hajar alayhi salam. She put her child there again. She put all her trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And she knew that Allah will provide for her. And that's exactly what happened to the, to the mother of Musa alayhi salam as well. You know the mother of Musa, she was also faced with a very fatal decision. That fatal decision is that if she leaves her child, he's going to be killed by the pharaohs. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَوْحَيْنَا إِلَىٰ أُمِّ مُوسَىٰ أَنْ أَضْرِي We inspire to the mother of Musa that you should take care of your child, you nurse your child. فَإِذَا خِفْتِ عَلَيْهِ Once you fear for your child, فَأَلْقِهِ فِي الْيَمْ When you feel afraid for the child, throw him in the water. Put him in a crib or cradle and then throw him on the surface of the water. Subhanallah, that's amazing. How could you ask a mother who's so afraid for her child to put that same child into the water, on, in, on the sea or even the river? It doesn't make any sense in our standards. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had plans for that child, that family. So the mother with full tawakkul, when she saw that danger approaching and coming closer, closing on her, she with full trust in Allah azza wa jal, she put that child on the surface of the water. That cradle starts going somewhere that she was anxious of might be going in the wrong direction. Again, the instinct of mothers, she sent his sister after him. She knew it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala anyway. But she still, she went and she sent his sister, go and go after him. See what is going to end up. SubhanAllah, her, her, her daughter came back with news. She didn't lie. Musa, 
end up in the hand of the same enemy, the same man who was looking to kill him. She panicked. Laula an rabatna ala qalbiha, except that we tied, which means we confirmed her heart with iman and belief, and we gave her some rest and some, 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 some serenity in her heart. That's how mothers are. They're always anxious. They panic when something wrong happens to you. And look at you right now, mashallah. Grown up, whether you're a teenager, or mashallah, your 20s, or you pass your 40s or 50s, if your mother is still alive, look at you. You're strong enough right now to yell at your mother and raise your voice and now complain and keep whining and blame her for all the errors and mistakes that you've done in your own life. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. The mother of Ibrahim, the mother of Ismail, Hajar, she didn't just stop there. She remained faithful for that child and his, his father. Ya ikhwa, Ibrahim alayhi salam when he left his family there, there were no reports that he came back very often. But we know he came back when his son balagha ashuddahu, which means he reached his age. The age when he was very young, like a youth, and he was not able and capable of building the Kaaba with his father. That's when he came back. At least that's what we know that when he came back. And what is so amazing is that this mother, all these years, she raised this, this child to be dutiful and faithful to his father. Subhanallah. I mean, Ismail could tell his father, who are you? I haven't seen you before. My mom, she just said same things about you, but you know, I don't know you. But she raised that child to love his father because she knew that that was the command and the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is a test for that family of Ibrahim alayhi salam. And for many people might say that's, that was too much. But that's the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is for us to learn all these lessons. This woman, she raised this child to be faithful to his father. So when he met him, he was a qurrata ayn lahuma. He was the comfort of their eyes and the comfort of their hearts. Motherhood is so great, ya ikhwah. And wallahi indeed, it takes a woman like Hajar to be a true mother. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah alayhim alayhim wa lakum nisana muslimina wa astaghfiruh inna wa lakum rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam wa taslima kathira thumma amma ba'd ibad Allah There is so much wallahi in the story of Hajar the mother of Ismail alayhi salam You know, when even when she was there by herself in the desert the way Ibrahim made the dua that Allah send them good people with good hearts to incline towards them she also made sure that she allied herself with good people who will be good for her child and her family and when, when, when her son grew up old enough to get married, she made sure that he married one of them. And he married one of them that they all praised him for his choice and for the qualities of the man that he became, Ismail. Who raised him to be like that? His mother. His mother, Hajar <laughs> And when his son built the Kaaba with his father and she became so proud of him, guess what was the prize that was given to them? That you should sacrifice your son. A mother is now so happy that her child is finally with his father. And alhamdulillah he is now under protection of his dad. And he has done a great deal of reward building the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. has been rewarded by asking her to sacrifice her child for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't hear anything from the son of the Prophet sallallahu Nor in the Quran about her complaining about that. So she, then she knew Allah has plans. Even Ibrahim السلام, who had dreamed about it three times before he was convinced, or at least he felt now that the urge to go and speak to his son about it. Ibrahim. It really takes a woman like Hajar to be a true mother, ya ikhwan. Ibad Allah. No wonder. No wonder Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded this man when this, when this man came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he said, Ya Rasulullah, man ahaqqu al-nasi bi husni sahabati? Who is the person who is most entitled to my companionship? If I would like to be friend with someone, best friend, best companion to me, who should that person be? 
I'm sure all men, they have in their minds cousins, friends, co-workers, and so forth. So this man, he received the unexpected answer from the Prophet ﷺ. The Messenger of Allah said to him, your mother. So the man, surprised by the answer, he asked again, he says, Ya Rasulullah, man, which means, who's next? Yeah, basically, yeah, I didn't mean that, but who, who could be next? The Prophet ﷺ said again, your mother. But then this man, I was puzzled. Did the Prophet ﷺ hear the question or did he repeat himself to me? So he now kind of anxiously asked again, قَالَ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ Who's next? قَالَ ثُمَّ مَنْ The Messenger of Allah وسلم, for the third time, he said to him, your mother. And that's when the man realized that it meant to be your mother. Three times. That's when it clicked. And yeah, okay, now I got it. So basically the Prophet was telling him, don't think about it, any other companion before you compassion for your mother. Then the man, he said to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, قَالَ ثُمَّ مَنْ Which means, now that I get it, Alhamdulillah, who is next, Ya Rasulullah? Still, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to him, your father. For those who keep good companionship with the outside world, but when they come back home, they have very mean relationship with their parents. Actually, just ponder over this hadith and this story of this woman, Hajar. For those who have been tried and tested to lose their mothers and their wives, whether because of death, or divorce, or any other reason, if Allah has blessed you and replaced with a, a stepmother, regardless how the situation might come in your life, you still, you still need to maintain good relationship with them. You still need to maintain good relationship with them. Your mother three times was mentioned for a purpose, Ya Ibadallah. So I would like to advise you, my dear brothers and sisters, to make this day your mother's day. Today, this Friday, when you leave, you go and you call her if she's alive. Talk to her. Bring happiness to her heart, inshaAllah ta'ala. If she's around you, make sure to have dinner with her. Why don't you take her out and have dinner with her? And enjoy this connection daughter and, mo and, and mother or son and mother together on your own, if you could do that. And if she's already gone, still you can maintain good relationship with her by making a lot of dua for her. Make a lot of dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive her and admit her to the jinnah. And you also make good connection and good ties with her friends and her relatives, your uncles, your cousins, the people she always had good connection with during her lifetime. This is how you can really keep good relationship with your mothers. Ibadallah. Just like it takes a man like Ibrahim to be a true father, it also Allah takes a woman like Hajar to be a true mother. Allahumma alimna ma yinfa'na wa anfa'na bima alamtana inna ka anta al-alim al-hakim Allahumma ati nufusana taqwaha wa zakiha anta khayru man zakaha anta waliyuha maulaha Ibadallah, inna Allah malaika tasalluna ala al-nabi Ya ayu al-ladina man sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Allahumma salli wa sallimu barik ala nabiyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa arda Allahumma anu khulafa al-rashidina abi bakr wa umara wa uthmana wa alihi wa an sa'ir al-sahabati ajma'in wa man tabi'ahum bi ihsan ila yawm al-deen wa aqam al-salam